Sounds like, okay. Well, I want to welcome everybody to the April 8, 2024 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. I am the chair, Timothy Reiniger. To my left is the town manager, Matthew Sturgis. To my right is the assistant town manager, Deborah Lane, and then Councillor Caitlin Harriman and Councillor Stephanie Anderson. Participating online is Councillor Penny Jordan and Councillor Susan Gillis. And we are expecting Councillors Thompson and Gabrielson momentarily. Can I ask a question? This is oh, Penny. yes, Penny. Can I yes. ask a question? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Only so that I, I get the drill having not done one of these remotely. So um, I know I can't turn my uh, video on. I can't do that. Uh, but um, you can recognize my hand gestures here. I'm not doing anything off color. Can you see my hand gestures? How do you know when I'm raising my hand? I think you should have the raise hand function on your screen, Penny. I do. Yep. And I clicked on it. Susan's is working. Ah, there you go. Oh. There you go. There, okay. <clears throat> you look good. Great. Only because, only because you know I'm fairly noisy. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, we can take a verbal, yeah, your nay as well. So, uh, all right, I'm going to next ask. I know you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you, Penny, uh, Councillor Jordan. Uh, next, we'll ask the uh, assistant town manager, I guess, acting as town clerk tonight, to call the roll, please. Chairman Reiniger? Here. Councillor Anderson? Here. Councillor Gabrielson? Councillor Gillis? Here. Councillor Harriman? Here. Councillor Jordan? Here. Councillor Thompson? Mr. Chairman, we do have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Lane. So next item is the Pledge of Allegiance. I would, the chair would like to ask Councillor Harriman if she'd be good enough to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Next item is town council reports and correspondence. Does any member of the council wish to make a report? Mr. Chairman. Oh, Councillor. Penny Jordan, you are now recognized. Okie dokie. Okay, I'm going to do my update on the school building advisory committee. Um, can people hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, that must yeah. be great. Is it like when I'm in the chambers and it feels like God speaking to you? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, good. Um, so we've uh, mailed out surveys that should be arriving at households across Cape Elizabeth within the next few days. Some people may have gotten um, gotten theirs already. It's really uh, full of a lot of information about the three options, their tax impacts, and uh, they're due back on uh, 4-22. Uh, it's also available online, and um, all of this information is included in the um, packets that you'll be receiving regarding the surveys. On uh, Wednesday, April 10th at six o'clock, there's a public forum. This is the one that was rescheduled from last Thursday when we had that wonderful snowstorm. Um, basically, all of the three options are going to be presented along with tax impacts as well as uh, long-term uh, costs. Um, on 422, there'll be a um, school board, town council, and school building advisory committee um, 
uh, meetings where the options will be uh, presented and discussed with the school board and town council. We're moving toward a, um, a five to a May 2nd, I can't believe I'm saying May, a May 2nd um, meeting of the school learning advisory committee where I'll be reviewing the, uh, the three options along with the input from the surveys in order to start uh, thinking about how and what we uh, may, may need to tweak or change in order to move toward a uh, May 9th, a, we'll go down to one option, uh, ideally, and uh, to propose to the school board and the town council. So there's a lot of activity happening. I would encourage uh, town councilors uh, to attend the forum on the 10th. I think it'll be quite informative. Um, and uh, I hope we have a good turnout from the community as well. And I just want everybody to know that all of your emails are, are read and uh, considered even if you don't get a response immediately, I don't want you to think they aren't being incorporated in our thinking. So that's where we're at with the school building advisory committee. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. Uh, quick follow-up question. All right, so first, so you mentioned the forum is April 10? 10. 10th, yep. This, okay. uh, what, two days from now, this Wednesday. Okay, and then could you refresh from my, uh, memory of the benefit of the public, the, the three options right now, what are the $3 amounts that, are, that will be in the survey? Okay, the $3 amounts in the survey, you're really testing my memory here, and I usually have my papers with me. The uh, option E is uh, $114 million. Uh, option uh, C, uh, is a hundred and two million. It could be a hundred and four, but it's in that range. And the uh, option B is at seventy-seven point five million. All right. Thank you. Are there any questions for Councillor Jordan? I see a hand from Councillor Gillis. Councillor Gillis, would you like to speak? You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I hate to start crabbing, but I've been concerned about the lack of a budget from the beginning of this thing. And I, I, I can't help but feeling we're going down the same path. Um, a third of the community is already experiencing cost burden shift. And will most likely vote against anything. Then we have another group of people are that are saying that they're not going to vote in, for anything unless it includes two new schools. And I, I just, I, I don't know. I just ultimately whatever uh, option we choose has to be passed by the voters. And I can't. You can't ignore what happened before. Uh, uh, that's it. I'm just kind of bitching. Sorry. Can I re can I respond? Yes, Tim? yes, yes, Councillor Jordan, please. Okay, thanks. Um, I I truly believe the process that we've taken is not the same as the uh, as the last approach that was taken. We have had, just as people have asked, we've had our owners rep. We try, we understand what the voters said in the initial referendum. Um, <clears throat> and we know that there are people who are, are, are I would say, income and uh, burdened in some way and uh, are challenges to their households, especially with the Redal, we're aware of all those things, and we aren't making any recommendations in a vacuum. And uh, there is not an option being put forward that is two new schools. 
and uh, and each of the options has some level of uh, new construction and some level of renovation, and it varies across the options. Um, I think that the committee is very aware of what the challenges are and what is being asked from a, um, I would say, a tax increase perspective and cost perspective. Uh, there are also some things that we can do um, as a town to put policy in place that maybe will help some of the households from a, uh, a tax perspective, similar to what we've done with the um, uh, senior tax relief program. Maybe that needs to be enhanced. Are there other things that we can do? Um, and I think that what people will hear at the forum and uh, at the meetings over the next uh, several months is uh, how, do, how do we make wise investments and how do we meet uh, the needs of the community and the students in a cost-effective way. And that to me is what the committee is trying to do. Okay, thank you, Councillor Jordan. Are there any other questions for Councillor Jordan? Are there any other reports or correspondence from members of the council? Anyone online from the council? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Is that Councillor Thompson? Okay. <laughs> I've been trying to get on. I, I mean, I've been on, but uh, I, I guess we, we can't see you guys. Is that what Penny said? Oops. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and, and I was unable. Oh, there you oh. are. Here's the oh. chamber. Thanks. Oh, now I can see you. Here's the chamber. Now I can see you. My apologies. So, uh, One last little box to check, so I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. No. And I've been I've been sending Stephanie messages and Tim messages and <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Deb just to let the record show that I was I was here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So the only thing I, I, I was going to go over was the uh, the uh, finance report. Um, and again, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this tonight, uh, but um, it, the dashboard and the finance report are available to anybody if anybody had any questions. There didn't seem to be anything out of the uh, ordinary, so uh, I don't think we need to we need to spend some. We got a pretty full agenda, so unless anybody had any questions, I, uh, that's all I have on the finance. And do any members of the council have a question for Councillor Thompson? Well, I do. Oh, Councillor Jordan, yes. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, and I, I don't know if this is for. Uh, Matt or for Tim, but I was looking at the at the dashboard, and um, can you just can you just tell me, I relative to uh, Fort Williams pay and display, I see you know uh, current year budget seven hundred thousand, and then we're at four twenty. Are we expecting to fill that gap? Um, at this point in time, I realize it's April, but uh, these months go by fast. And I don't know how much we trended last year at this time in, in order to um, hit the numbers that we had outlined. And the um, had to do with the, I think it was excise tax and revenue sharing. Are we, um, are we on track for those as well. I'll uh, ask Mr. Sturgis to give a response. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Jordan, for the question as well. Um, regarding revenue sharing and excise taxes, I think we are uh, tracking to be where we are. We we're darn close to where we were last year. We did. Actually, I want to, I gotta take a look at that number, but we should be close, closing the gap uh, on both of those as we go forward. We do have excise tax revenues, and sometimes that's how they are booked in the, question, in, the in the time of the month, so we had not had 
marches at the time of the close of the month to report out for April's or for this dashboard. So that's lagging on that. Um, pay and display revenue, uh, as of April 1st, we started charging again. So that's changing. Uh, we, we, people are paying at the present time. Last year, uh, we changed uh, to include April and up until, uh, up until November. So I think we're gonna be looking and I anticipate we're gonna be closing that gap as well as we go forward. And uh, so over the next three months, you know, notwithstanding we need good weather, June last year really uh, hampered our start, but I think uh, we're looking to close that gap over the next three months and pull in roughly 250 to $300,000 in, in revenue uh, from, from that as well. And then one other item we have on that uh, cable franchise fee. <laughs> Siri's always listening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> iPad is not responding. <laughs> Sorry, Councilor Anderson. Sorry about that. That's all right. And then uh, uh, our cable franchise fee uh, check just came in last week, so that'll be booked uh, for next okay. next month as well. But uh, we do anticipate that they should be closing those gaps as we go over the last quarter plus a month. Thank you, Mr. Sturgis. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further questions on the finance reports? Seeing none, we will next move to citizen opportunity for discussion on items that are not on the agenda. This will be limited to 15 minutes unless extended by the council and three minutes per person. And the chair will now recognize Polly Wilcox. Thank you. you may proceed. Um, since we have two people from the town council on Zoom and we can't see them to read their lips, I just would ask that they would speak more slowly. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilcox. Would anyone else in the chamber like to speak on an item that is not on the agenda? Would anyone online like to speak on an item that is not on the agenda? No hands raised. No Mr. hands. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Seeing none, we will next move to the town manager's monthly report. I should note that this will be the last formal. And we have one more. One more? One more. Yeah, May 6th. Oh. I thought uh, the next meeting in May is after you leave. All right. Well, never mind. We'll proceed with the monthly report. <laughs> Thank you, right. Thank you. Here's your trying hat. to get rid of you fast, Matt. Here, here's your hat. What's your hurry? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, will, I will also try to be brief this evening. I just have a, a few different items to report out. Uh, as you will notice, of the past two weeks, we've had a couple of substantial storms that have damaged a lot of trees in town. There's quite a bit of substantial cleanup that needs to take place. And our public works department is working diligently to try to do that on, on the side of the roads as we speak. So if you do have branches at your property, if you could bring them to the side of the road, that would be great. Our crews will be going by over the next two weeks to clean, clean that up. We've also uh, contracted with three different uh, hauling companies or trucking companies to help assist us in that just because there's such an overwhelming amount. But we are grateful for the, uh, the patience people have in trying to get to that. It's, these past two have been a real doozy and uh, that's an understatement because when 70 plus percent of the town loses power and there's been such substantial damage, it's been quite a bit to clean up. So they will be busy over the next two weeks uh, doing that. Uh, also, uh, many may have heard that uh, once again, we've had a, uh, an additional boat that has uh, uh, a damaged boat that landed on Cape, Cape Elizabeth's waterfront. This, this time it was at Cliff House Beach. Um, this boat apparently made its way from, uh, uh, from peaks during the storm of the, on Friday and landed at Cliff House Beach and was fairly damaged when it got there and fell, proceeded to fall apart. So uh, we are working with the Coast Guard as well as our fire chief and police department and public works to try to manage the cleanup of that. Uh, they're pursuing it through the owner of the property, uh, the, the boat's owner. Uh, there's a question regarding insurance, but 
that's where the responsibility lies to start. Uh, there will be future updates when it comes to that. However, if he can't do that or the person who owns it can't do it, then the Coast Guard will step into that situation. Uh, I will say, if, you, if people are, are taking the efforts to try to help clean that up, and some have, and they've been bringing it up the stairs and putting it on the curbside, and we've picked that up, or we're in the process of picking it up, be careful. Uh, you know, really be careful is what our message is on that. There, the, you know, there is the danger of hypodermic needles that may be present in that wreckage. So as a public, public safety uh, message on that, the takeaway is please be careful and maybe let the process work itself out. But that is a, that is a legitimate concern through uh, both chiefs have identified that to me. So uh, that's just a shame. Uh, next thing, uh, have better news. Uh, we do. We have our firm contracted to perform the methane study over at the Gullcrest property. So they will be doing that work this month, and then it'll take a couple of different days, or a couple. Of, uh, sorry, between 10 to 14 days to report out the results or to get their study, their test results back, and then they'll analyze that and bring that back. We anticipate they'll be presenting to the council the results of that study at the June workshop. So, and then council will be able to go from there. Councilor Anderson. Yeah, um, I know that they're looking at things other than methane gas. Will the other aspects of the study be reported out at the same time? As far as if, if there may be PFAS or any other substances, yes, right. uh, yeah, yeah, the whole, yeah, it's a, there will, all elements will be reported at the same time. Th yeah, thank you for the clarifying question. Yeah, that should, uh, so we should have Steve Harding and perhaps the gentleman from Arcadis who did the, did the reporting or at least Steve Harding and, uh, and our and our folks would be that reporting. So that is in, in motion, so you should see that results coming soon. Thank you. I think that's all I have to report for tonight, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sturgis. Next, we have review of draft minutes. I think we will vote on each separately. So in March 11, 2024, minutes, is there a motion to approve? Councilor Anderson. And to approve the uh, March 11th, 2024 uh, regular meeting minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Councilor Harriman, thank you. All right, do a vote. And again, we. Sorry, I just wanted to. Uh, Councilor Gillis had her hand up. Oh, Councilor Gillis. I think she got muted. And, uh, okay. and we will need to, and the, uh, the other, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we will need to call a, uh, a roll call vote, so that's the only bridge one. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, so we will now vote first on the March 11, 2024 minutes. Councilor Anderson? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson, Councilor Gillis? Yes. Councilor Harriman? Yes. Councilor Jordan? Yes. Councilor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Next, the mo uh, April 1, 2024 special meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Councillor Anderson. Thank you. Is there a second? But second. I, well, Councillor Harriman got her hand up quickly. So does anyone have any changes, any other notes? All right. We will proceed with a vote. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? Yes. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Councillor Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries, six yays. Okay, thank you. Next item is the consent agenda, which is items uh, 64 through 70. And first, there is an opportunity for public comment on any items on the consent agenda. Again, limited to 15 minutes, three minutes per person. Is there anyone who would like to make a comment on any item on the consent agenda? The chair recognizes Cynthia Dill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm looking at my phone so I can see what item it is. 
I would like to just comment briefly. My name is Cynthia Dill, and I live at 1227 Shore Road. Um, and I would like to comment briefly on item number 65-2024, consider authorizing the signing of an MOU with the town of Scarborough um, on the Sawyer Road grant. I have, I have some concerns about that. I feel like it's moving very quickly and that it's a very drastic response to uh, what appears to be an effect of climate change. I think climate change is real, we know it, but I would like to adapt rather than succumb to it, and I would hope that in this day and age we could consider doing something else besides just getting rid of the road. I have, and I also have some concerns that we're taking a grant from the natural resources. I mean, I'm all for that organization, but it just seems like perhaps we might be going down a slippery slope. I know there are other grants on the agenda from government agencies, but this is kind of a, you know, it's, it's one right up my alley, right? I'm all for the environment, but I just, I'm concerned that you're gonna quickly remove part of Sawyer Road, I think. It's too soon. Thank you. Thank you. Would any other member of the public like to comment on any of the items on the consent agenda? Okay, I see no one in the chamber, anyone online. No hands raised, Mr. No Chairman. hands raised, okay. Uh, would any member of the council like to take off of the consent agenda any specific item? Councilor Anderson. Can I ask a question about one of the items without taking it off? Procedurally, can I do that? Well, as soon as you make a motion, it'd be open for discussion, right? Okay. okay. All right, I don't... Uh, Councilor Jordan has her hand up. Oh, Councilor Jordan. Yes, I need to ask that um, uh, you remove number 70, and I say that because I need to recuse myself from that as it relates to my system. All right, so item 70? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. All right, so item 70 has been removed. Uh, is there a motion to approve the remaining consent item, items? Councilor Harriman. So moved. Is there a second? Second it. I'll second it. A second by Councilor Jordan. No discussion, Councilor Anderson. Yeah, uh, with respect to um, item number 65, the Sawyer Road, I'm, as you know, I'm fairly new to this group, but was this, how long has this planning process been in the works? About two years. I'll ask, uh, tell Manager Mr. Sturgis to give a response. Councilor Herman uh, was, was correct, uh, about two years. That it's been, it's been under study and reported out and and uh, Mr. Sturgis, would you like to comment on the, the source of the federal grant or uh, uh, grant funds, I should say? It, well, it's, this is the single largest grant the town has ever received. It was a, a very exhaustive process and very competitive. And this is, we received the lion's share of all the funds that they had available for the project. And it was, you know, it scored better than all of the other projects that were out there because of the environmental impacts that they had identified through this and the mitigations that it would that it would cause uh, that it would cure. The other aspect of this is, and to to Miss Dill's question, I think it's a it's a great question and one that you look at. It's like, well, do you harden or do you retreat from certain things? And uh, a this is probably one of the lower cost approaches that we can to mitigate this issue. Uh, it's also the most environmentally sound uh, according to what you know folks who know a lot more about this than I do uh, think about it but if you were going to choose another option such as building a causeway or elevating the road or doing something you'd be looking at substantially more to the tune of four to five times the cost to, to do that so it's a question of dollars and cents and, and environment all kind of coming together uh, I know both councils did uh, have a joint uh, Cape Elizabeth and the Scarborough Co councils both had a joint workshop back in January and uh, got together and, and reviewed this and there was there has been up until you know up until today basically overwhelming public support for this decision uh, even the folks in Scarborough because it's ultimately in Scarborough the section that we're looking at removing uh, but it does end it in both towns 
is the end result of it. But it was overwhelmingly supported by the public at both, even folks who initially came to speak against it, at the end came to speak in favor of it. So it's been, it's been well received and it's, uh, it seems like a great project and one yeah, we have tried to, uh, we've done outreach to the abutters. They've all been very, very receptive and positive about, about this as an alternative as well. So that's kind of the direction that we've gone in. We try to turn over all the stones possible to get there. If that, if that helps put it in your perspective, for sure. Councillor Jordan, I see your hand up. Would you like to make a further yeah, comment? I yeah, I just wanted to, and I think Matt covered most of it, but um, because I was in total opposition to this um, closing down the Sawyer Road because I like men and people a lot, but we don't own the majority of the road. And um, and the other thing is, is that if we think about dollars that we need to distribute across the many projects that need to be done in Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough, this is where the towns decided that we would take an approach that uh, would really um, be environmentally sound and talk about the impact to Wells Road because we know that that is going to become uh, a more heavily traveled road. So we'll have to figure out what we do there. Great. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. So are the councillors ready to vote <clears throat> on the motion? Kim, Kim, Kim oh. can you see my hand oh. is up? I didn't see it, but now I do. Thank you. Yes. And, and I think Councillor Jordan kind of answered some of the question I had. We, recent, we recently this week got a email from somebody that was wondering with the closure of Sawyer, had we studied its impact on wells and was there any um, any act any action that we were planning on taking, but it sounds like that we've talked about it, but we don't really have a plan for the the impact on Wells Road. So uh, that was just a question I had of, is there, and I'm like Stephanie, I'm a counselor, uh, Anderson, new to this particular project, but has there been any work done on what impact it's gonna have on Wells Road and what we might be able to do to uh, uh, work on that? Ms. Sturgis, yes. Uh, th thank you, Councilor Thompson, that's a great question. Uh, it's one that I think that will continue to be investigated. It's about a thousand trips a day uh, currently on that section of Sawyer Road, so it's one of our lower traveled roadways in the town. Uh, so there not, the question of diversion has not been, uh, hasn't really raised to a significant level, but it is an item that I think people need to pay attention to going forward uh, to see if there is gonna be diversion that takes place where folks are trying to find, you know, where they would normally maybe use Wells Road and to go to Scarborough that way uh, through the back end of Sawyer, uh, or to go to that section of South Portland via via Sawyer as well. Uh, but at a thousand cars, it is one of our lesser traveled uh, thoroughfares in town. So, but it is something that I think we'll have to continue to monitor going forward. And it may be a question of uh, different mitigation or speed mitigation or, uh, or awareness with folks as well. You know, you may have to look at widening or expanding uh, shoulders in the future. Uh, that's maybe more of a, of a overall safety concern across many roads in town as well. All right, thank you, Mrs. Sturgis. Yes, sir. Are the councilors ready to vote? The motion is to approve the consent agenda items 64. Uh, 64 through 69. That was my, my error, sorry, I unmuted him. All right, uh, we'll, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll for the vote. Councilor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? Yes. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries, six yay. Thank you. All right, now we will turn to Councillor Jordan, who asked to take off the consent agenda item 70, appointment of election wardens and clerks. I need to recuse myself from this. From the vote. Thank 
Councilor Jordan would like to recuse herself from the vote due to uh, her, uh, her sister, Carol Ann, being one of the uh, members okay. uh, on, uh, for the appointment as an election right. warden. All right. So I will take a motion to approve the motion and the, the names uh, as detailed. Is there a motion to approve? Motion by Councilor Harriman. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Anderson. Any further discussion? And we will note that Councilor Penny Jordan has recused herself from this vote for the. Uh, now we are welcoming Councilor Gabrielson. We are at item 70, oh, well, consent agenda item, uh, item yeah. 16 on the agenda, item 70 2024, appointment of election wardens and clerks. So we're uh, unless you have any specific comment, we are ready to vote. All right. I'll ask the clerk to please proceed with the vote. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Cal Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries, six yay. Thank you. All right, now we're turning to item 17, public hearing on process submission amendments. And this, again, we'll ask uh, for members of the public to come forward. They'll be limited to three minutes each. So please come to the podium and provide your name and address, and then I will Recognize you and start the timer. Great. Um, good, mor or good morning. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jonathan Sarbeck. I live at 60 Longfellow Drive. Um, I'm here to urge the town council to not let Matt Sturgis go. Uh, but uh, more on point, uh, I'm here as the chairman of the planning board. And since this uh, um, uh, amendment or this um, agenda item has to do with the process that the planning board goes through, I'm just kind of here as a resource if anybody has any questions. Also, just wanted to point out that. Uh, this was really done to kind of clean up the process of, that was affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, while also the uh, town council, or excuse me, the town staff moving to a four-day work week. Uh, it provides an opportunity for uh, the applicants to actually provide less uh, uh, paper copies than were uh, ordered in the, or were uh, made um, to be available to us as a planning board than in the past. Uh, also, it actually gives more time between uh, submission deadlines and the hearings as well. Uh, and then also, we know that those are very necessary to have those deadlines, so we're not receiving things at the 11th hour uh, because that would be a disservice to the publics because they have a right to know what the applications are that come in from the planning board. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm available, but uh, I appreciate all of your time, and thank you, Matt, for all your work. And I should note, I don't know if this is a historic moment to have two former Cumberland DAs in the council chambers here. This is great. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public in the chamber who would like to comment on the process submission amendments? Are there any members of the public online who would like to comment? No hands raised online, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sturgis. That will, we will now close the public hearing on the process submission amendments and proceed to uh, item 18 on the agenda, which is item 71-2024 to consider proposed process submission amendments uh, that would be ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council following a public hearing on Monday, April 8, 2024 does hereby approve the process submission amendments in chapter 19 of the zoning ordinance, chapter 16 subdivision ordinance, and the planning board rules as presented. Is there a motion to approve? I move to approve. By Councillor Anderson, second by <laughs> Councillor Gabrielson, thank you. Is there any further discussion by members of the council? Councillors are ready to vote. We will proceed with the vote, please. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Oh, 
Oh, just a moment. That was my, oops. Let's see, sorry. She should be able to vote in a moment. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <Thank> okay. <you>. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? Yes. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries, seven yay. Thank you. All right, next, uh, number 19 on the agenda, item 72-2024, opportunity for public comment relating to the fiscal year 2025 budget as has been presented to the council by Mr. Sturgis and his staff. Would any member of the public like to comment? This is limited to 15 minutes total, three minutes per person. Yes. Hi, my name is Andy Patton, One Warbler Drive. I'm a little nervous, but I'll get straight away here in a second. Anyway. Um, thank you. First, I want to thank you, Matt, for all your work and all your service to the town over the last several years. Every time I've respond, asked for you for some information, you've been very kind and quick to give it to me. Um, I just had a couple of questions about the capital improvement plan, the, the budget lines, and uh, I read the budget and I just thought I could give some suggestions uh, to make it a little bit more, um, sort of might hang together a little bit more. So I took a few copies of, uh, of some pages here. Um, you've presented an $18.6 million budget of the town. Um, in your narrative on page three and four, you talk sort of broadly about the kinds of work you're going to do around um, you propose in the capital uh, projects. Um, I would recommend if we're going to do work at Town Hall, if we're going to do work at the Ford, if we're going to do work at the schools, if we're going to work in specific areas, we might have a department by department sort of set forth what the amount of money is. Um, nowhere on the first two or three pages, is there any specific total as to what the CIP budget is gonna be? Um, later on, <clears throat> out in about page 187, the community services folks <clears throat> serve up about five or six items that they wanna get done at the fort. Now there's no total there, but it's basically $610,000 that the fort, that they wanna spend up at the fort, which I don't have a problem with, it's really up to the town to make those decisions and town council and, and you and your staff, could be a million dollars, but anyway, it's not really set forth. Um, then when you get to page 197, 198 is where you have this really long spreadsheet of relatively small type and it goes out 10 years and it's obviously a first crack at what the CIP is gonna look like for the next 10 years. And as we all know, it's an iterative process. It's something that, um, it's lots of gray area and lots of fog we operate in the second half of a 10 year program. But um, if you go to the, the chart and you drop down to 2025, the number looks like it's slightly over $2 million, except it doesn't include the $610,000 that the Ford is asking for. It's only asking for community services. Can I just get a couple more seconds? Um, so I'm asking myself, where's the 610? And I think it would be helpful to have that in there so that the town understands, because we're at a time in our town where Facilities is pretty big time now for the next several years. So, and then later on, after the chart, which is this, the, the DPW director who does a really nice job with his, with his capital programs, he does include not so small things like the $7 million shore road project, which has been sitting out there. Now we know we're gonna do casino and all that, those difficulties down there, but I think that we just need to load it all in, in terms of an iterative process. We need to load in the seven million dollars, which is gonna be seven million and nine million. You have, you have the facilities director who's referenced seven million dollars in, 
in his narrative. We've got the updated Harriman report. We've got the schools. And once the schools come in with their, with their, their capital program, I think it needs to come together. So um, just some thoughts for the future. Uh, town manager, I know you can't really respond right now, but I'd like, to, I'd like to be able to see the thing hang together a little bit more rather than having to be individual parcels of, uh, of information. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Patton, and I would encourage you to, to feel free to send additional detailed comments by email to the council, to the town manager, have additional calls. And, you know, your, we thank you for your thoughtful review and observations. I don't know if Mr. Sturgis, you want to make any quick comment? Or? I'll, uh, yeah, th thanks, Mr. Patton, as well. Kind words were super appreciated, and I always enjoy our interactions for sure, and uh, we'll take all of your recommendations for sure moving forward. I know uh, this year was a, we're trying to make a larger leap from our capital side of it for long-term planning, so uh, it's in the process of trying to pull together a larger, let's say, a holistic or comprehensive capital plan for the whole operation, inclusive of the schools. So we've been working on that as well as trying to uh, identify uh, funding sources going forward and how those improvements will be paid for and what funding areas you'll be pursuing. So it's, uh, it's a, as you say, it's, a, it's, a, it's an iterative process. We're trying to get, get to where we need to be. but. Uh, this was a big leap this year from where we had been in the past, but definitely appreciate the, the thoughts as well. And I always try to improve on that document year in and year out. Would any other member of the public like to comment on the proposed budget for fiscal year 2025? Anyone online? No hands online, Mr. Chairman. No hands. All right. So that concludes the public comment period on the fiscal year 2025 budget. We do note uh, a series of very important dates. On Monday, April 22 at 6 p.m., the school board presentation of the school department budget. Tuesday, April 23rd at 6 p.m., finance committee budget wrap up if needed. There will be a special town council meeting to schedule the budget public hearing, the formal public hearing for Monday, May 6th at 7 p.m. Uh, and Monday, May 13th at 7 p.m. is when the town council will be voting on the fiscal year 2025 budget. All right. And so, We now will proceed with the next item, item 20 on the agenda, which is 73-2024 uh, request from Councillor Anderson to consider a donation to Project Graduation 2024. I understand uh, from Councillor Anderson that uh, this item, she has further information and would like to treat this differently. So. Turn over to Council Anderson. Yes, I understand from um, talking with a couple of the parents involved with this that they have either met or are about to meet their fundraising goal, and so I am withdrawing this motion. All right, so you are formally withdrawing this item. Yes, I am. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, would any other member of the council like to comment? Or I think it sounds like a great result. So thank you for your efforts. Mr. Sturgis. If, if I may, just one item the council may want to consider going forward regarding this question. Uh, I would encourage, if, if, and Councilor Anderson, if you have good contacts with uh, these folks, encourage them to consider applying for the bottle shed donation program. A lot of the boosters programs get that uh, throughout the year, and they just have to make application. It goes through the recycling committee, ends up uh, uh, heading up that those requests on an annual basis, but it's you know, it's a fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars that different like the soccer boosters get, field hockey boosters, different sports boosters teams get that. So that may be a, a resource that they want to consider in the future. And just you know, reading this request, is like I don't believe that's ever been pursued because I I have to scratch those checks to who gets them. No, and, it uh, hasn't. This is a 
So right. hopefully that, that'll be a good option for them to consider as well as an additional uh, fund funding so resource. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sturgis. All right, the next item is for the council to consider scheduling a public hearing on the pesticide ordinance amendments. We now have an opportunity for public comment that's limited to 15 minutes, three minutes per person. And uh, the chair will now recognize Mr. Bryant. Your timing was impeccable. <laughs> up in the car when I was watching on Zoom. Um, thank you very much. I will be very brief. Um, I do simply want <clears throat> to thank the Ordinance Committee, which did a great job last summer with a lot of work and different membership for the most part, aside from Councilor Harriman. Um, and the recent meetings that the Ordinance Committee has made has resulted in what I think is an improved product. It's exactly what the backers of the uh, referendum wanted when we started out. We were focused on <clears throat> residential pesticide use, but we hoped it would inspire the town to do more. Um, and I think what has been produced reflects uh, really well upon the Ordinance Committee in the town so far. <clears throat> um, the improvements do not do anything to uh, essentially alter the thrust of the ordinance that was adopted at the referendum by a 21% margin in November. So I'm very much in support of the Ordinance Committee's proposal and I look forward to talking to you at the public hearing in May. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bryant. Would any other member of the public like to comment on uh, scheduling a public hearing on the pesticide ordinance amendments? Anyone in the chamber, anyone online like to comment? No hands online, Mr. No Chairman. hands online. All right, thank you. Is, would someone like to make a motion to set this to a public hearing on Monday, May 13, 2024 at 7 p.m. I'll make the motion. Well, I'd like to make a comment, actually. Okay, so motion by Councilor Anderson. But first, let's see if there's a second. Second. Councilor Gabrielson. Um, Thank you. Okay, Councilor Anderson. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I just want to point out that the Ordinance Committee has met with respect to this ordinance nine times. And I have... 18 pages of notes from discussions from people who have participated. The public participation in getting to this point has been very significant. In addition to those nine ordinance committee meetings, this matter has already been to this town council three times. So I think it, um, I hope that, I hope that we're ready for a um, uh, Final public hearing uh, followed by um, approval. This this ordinance was originally it, it was passed by referendum uh, significantly uh, 2291 to 1493, and what the ordinance committee has done is is made clarifications and improvements. There is a a um, a grid um, that has been posted online which shows uh, what the ordinance was before the referendum, what it is as a result of the referendum, which is what it is right now, and then what it would be if this ordinance were passed. So members of the public are encouraged to take a look at that uh, in advance of our public hearing, assuming we have it next month. Thank you, Council Anderson. Would any other members of the council like to make a comment? I just have a quick question for Councilor Anderson and or Councilor Harriman, members of the Ordinance Committee. Will this address the concerns about grubs that we do? <laughs> it depends on who you ask. Some people say yes and some people say no. Uh, apparently there, it, I'm going to say it does in the sense that there are some non- there are some natural products that can deal with grubs, and there's also the opportunity to get a waiver if those fail. Yeah. Hey, Councilor Harriman, do you want to make a comment? Or? No, I just, I, you asked, I, I don't think it does. All right. 
Uh, I don't think it does. Oh, yes, Councillor Penny Jordan. I, I don't think it does, having listened to the experts uh, at the uh, at our ordinance committee meetings I, well over a year ago, um, that some of the products that are used uh, to break the grub cycle aren't as effective as others. And, um, and grubs are going to become a, a particularly large problem. And I think that if you follow South Portland and Portland uh, issues at this point in time, that is one of the biggest areas of concern because their ordinance was restricted as well. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. Any further comments? Uh, the council is ready to vote. Okay, I'll ask the clerk to please call the vote. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? Yes. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries unanimously, seven yay. Thank you. The next agenda item is 75-2, uh, 2024, to consider scheduling a public hearing to update the floodplain management ordinance. And as always, we begin with an opportunity for public comment limited to 15 minutes, three minutes per person. Would anyone in the chamber like to comment on the update, uh, scheduling a public hearing on the update uh, to the floodplain management ordinance? Would anyone online like to comment? No hands raised online, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Would a, uh, well now we need a motion to order the Cape Elizabeth Town Council to set to public hearing on Monday, May 13, 2024, 7 p.m. The uh, update to the floodplain management ordinance as drafted. Would anyone like to make the motion? Councillor Gabrielson, is there a second? Second. Councillor Anderson, any further comments from members of the council or questions? Council ready to vote? I'll ask the clerk to please proceed. Councilor Anderson? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Gillis? Yes. Councilor Harriman? Yes. Councilor Jordan? Yes. <clears throat> Councilor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries unanimously, seven yay. Thank you. Next agenda item, 76-2024 to consider referring accessory dwelling unit amendments to the planning board. We'll begin with an opportunity for public comment limited to 15 minutes, three minutes per person. Would anyone in the chamber like to comment on the referral of the proposed ADU amendments to the planning board? Would anyone online like to comment? No hands raised. All right. Chairman. Seeing none, um, would any member like to make the motion to send these draft proposed amendments to the planning board for review and report back to the council? I, I, I so move. Okay, moved by Councillor Anderson. Second. Second by Councillor Harriman. Is there any discussion? I, oh, me, me. Yes, Councillor Jordan. Do, sorry. Sure. I don't know if it, if it fits here um, at this point in time, but I, I do think it's something that we need to talk about again regarding ADUs. Um, and um, and we received an email from um, uh, from a citizen reminding me of this aspect of ADUs that we had uh, had in 
some changes at one point in time. And that's the conversion of an uh, accessory unit that already exists as of a certain date. We had one, one, 2023, uh, that you could take that and, uh, and make it into an ADU and it would be exempt from the maximum size. So I think it's something we want to consider as off to the planning board or if uh, the ordinance committee wants to put that in their back pocket for a future change to ADUs. But if we're truly committed to ADUs, this is another way that we can get uh, more uh, housing available. Thank you, Councillor Jordan. Any further comments? Are the councillors ready to vote? All right, I'll ask the clerk to please proceed. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? Yes. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries with seven yay. Thank you. All right, next item. Item 77-2024, request from Councillor Gillis to consider placing a non-binding referendum on the November 5, 2024 ballot regarding affordable housing referendum question. And we will begin with an opportunity for public comment limited to 15 minutes, three minutes per person. And the chair will now recognize Ms. Cynthia Dill. Thank you very much, Chairman Reiniger, uh, members of the town council. Uh, good evening, my name is Cynthia Dill. Um, I first just wanna say uh, a big thank you to Councillor Gillis for sponsoring this item on the agenda. We have been working in common cause on the housing issues for three years. So we top the Sawyer Road analysis. Um, and, and, and this is a bipartisan effort uh, by a lot of people. And I'm, I'm grateful to Councillor Gillis for bringing this issue full circle back where it belongs in really the hands of the Cape Elizabeth voters because we put out a petition on one model of affordable housing that was rejected by a majority of Cape citizens, many of whom want to take action and do something. And this is an opportunity to vote on a second model that's a good model in my view because it answers the call of our town. It responds in a way uh, that's fiscally conservative and socially responsible to the needs that are outlined in our comprehensive plan. It takes advantage of our zoning ordinance as well as the density bonus in LD 2003. And I just want to briefly say that, um, you know, the, the charter doesn't necessarily require that you putting a non-binding referendum question on the ballot has a public hearing and you could just do it tonight. And that way, I guess, would be my first request. Um, but obviously, any action to advance this issue towards a public vote, I would greatly appreciate. Um, the attachments that appear on the agenda, um, first, you'll see the email from the, um, the town manager. Um, who I'm in agreement um, with the previous speakers we're gonna miss sorely and I wanna say now, even though I'll have another opportunity, thank you very much for your service. Uh, the, the first draft um, attachment, you can see it contained three suggested uh, questions with a link to LD 2003 for purposes of defining what an affordable housing development is. And then the final question that we sort of came up with as the best question appears as the, as the last attachment and it's a simple question that um, I think is fair and I have shopped this question to all constituencies that I'm in contact with including the notorious and very powerful Cape Pod Facebook group and the response has been that despite people being perhaps a, you know opposed to the idea the question is fair that they'll have an opportunity to weigh in so I would just hope that you would um, consider um, moving the question towards the people um, the language, I'm not gonna, I drafted it. I'm not gonna win any literary awards for it. I would just say that let's not let perfection, if I may, Mr. Chair, I just, I'm almost done, if I may, please. Um, I was the drafter of the first petition that withstood legal scrutiny and I believe this one is fair and um, 
in terms of the methane gas study, there's a lot of things that are riding on that that aren't at all uh, slowing down, and I would suggest that if you uh, put this out to a public hearing and have a vote, you'll have plenty of time to consider that. Um, CAPE citizens will have time to get informed about the issue. It'll help us define our next chapter of affordable housing. And um, again, I just want to thank Councillor Gillis and all of you for taking the time on this effort. It's, you know, it's a long haul, and I promise you, if we get to the vote in November and it's voted down, you'll never hear from me again. But I don't think that's the case. I think there is going to be support. For so thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Dill. Would any other member of the public in the chamber like to comment? Would anyone online like to comment? Mr. Chairman, we have Francis Walsh. Oh, hand raised. All right, the chair will now recognize Francis Walsh for three minutes. Thank you, my name is Francis Walsh, 51 Starboard Drive, Cape Elizabeth. Uh, while the good model that um, is being proposed to go to a non-binding referendum is based um, on one study only of Gullcrest site it's by an engineer that uh, does state in his study that was done July of 2023 that it should be recognized that the study area is a challenging site to develop due to sloping terrain over much of the site as well as the presence of ledge and wetlands. Therefore, although it is possible to construct a development within the study area, the site related costs to do so will be much higher than to develop a similar site with as many developmental limitations. He also goes on to say, should the town decide to pursue the site further, uh, the town should consider the following items as next steps. And I know that the methane study is, uh, is, is scheduled to, to happen, uh, but he does uh, also recommend that um, A qualified firm be hired to uh, look at the issue of presence of ledge at the site and hire a geotechnical firm to investigate existing soil and ledge con conditions uh, to confirm the nearby Portland Water District property lim limits around the wastewater treatment plants and hold an informational meeting with the main DEP and potentially U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to determine issues related to wetlands impacts. Um, there are existing state of Maine DEP permits in place on that site that will have to be dealt with. Um, there will have to be a state of Maine Department transportation study done, and there will have to be a federal U.S. Army Corps of Engineer impact to wetlands. Um, I have spoken in the past about uh, how I feel about, and I, I know I've heard from other people in town that feel the same way, that uh, given the report that Sebago uh, submitted, this is probably one of the most expensive sites to develop and probably the one that has the most limitations for the type of housing that um, is being proposed for that site. So I think before a non-binding referendum question is, um, approved. I think it should be expanded to include uh, some of the uh, questions that uh, were raised uh, by Sebago Technics so that um, people aren't voting on something that they have forgotten what Sebago Technics had said in the report regarding the site. I think as time goes by, people, and we've, we've seen this happen uh, over and over again, uh, people tend to forget to forget uh, what has been reported in the past. And I think we, we need to look at other sites and not just base affordable housing for Cape Elizabeth on one study alone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. I would, uh, is there any other member of the public would like to comment? No further hands raised online. No further Mr. hands. Okay, thank you. All right, I will. Uh, recognize Councillor Gillis to comment on her proposal and make a motion if she sees Thank fit. you. Thank you, Chairman Oranginer. I move to send this matter for a public hearing 
um, at the next regular meeting. Uh, the Housing Diversity Study Committee specifically asked a question about developing affordable housing at Boatcrest. And 60% of the respondents said yes. Um, I, I think the public hearing, perhaps we can get more information there, but um, I still think that they're developing 22 acres of public owned land. If, uh, if possible, we'd have a whole new neighborhood there. That's it. All right, so Councilor Gillis has made a motion to send this item to public hearing uh, May 13, 2024, town council meeting. Is there a second? I'll second it. Oh, Matt, Matt do you see my hand raised? Yes, sir. Oh, Councilor, well, I, sorry. All right, Councilor Thompson. Yes, I, uh, up there. I would, I'd like to second the motion. Okay. All right, any discussion on this item? I have a couple Jordan's of hand. things I'd like oh, to say. Councilor Jordan. Okay. Um, I just want to say right up front that um, I'm not I'm not opposed to assessing that site. I'm not opposed to that at all. Here's what I start to think about, and I'm sorry if I'm going to go on a, a little long, but um, I I am not in support of a non-binding referendum, and for a couple of reasons. Um, Number one, there's been a couple uh, counselors who have said that they are often concerned about the optics that uh, Cape Elizabeth has out in the greater Portland, uh, across the state of Maine. What we're doing is we're putting a question out there that is uh, asking if you, if Cape Elizabeth citizens want to put a, um, a housing development, affordable housing, on a site that hasn't even been uh, adequately tested, that is uh, near a transfer station and a sewage treatment plant and a capped landfill. So we talk about optics there. If, if this referendum were to go forward and they would say yes, I mean, if they would say no, then what is going to be the optics there? It's going to be Cape Elizabeth voted no on affordable housing at uh, at Gulfcrest. They are not in support of uh, affordable housing. So I think about those messages. Um, and again, the fact that the test results are not back. And so what's the rest? We're gonna need a vote anyway, if we were ever to do an investment in any infrastructure at that site after we as a council and we as the decision makers around how we move projects forward, what strategies we use, who we engage in doing that, how do we assess a site? I don't think the council by saying no to a referendum going forward is saying no to the site. I think we would say no to the approach that's being taken. Uh, because, and I'll say once again, yes, the Housing Diversity Study Committee put recommendations forward. Yes, they are good recommendations. Yet we have not, as a council, prioritized that work in any way. And so therefore, we're continuing to piecemeal. Um, then, um, as I look at, um, the work that's been done. And, and like I said, I believe that a project can be assessed there. But the other thing we haven't done is say, okay, if we were to put a, um, a affordable housing, um, affordable housing at that site, what does that do to the existing transfer station recycling center? It starts to encumber what we can do at future dates around that, uh, that complex. And so I think my position is step back, let's look at it and let's determine how we wanna move forward. And I can't support 
even moving this to a public hearing. All right, thank you, Councillor Jordan. I see Councillor Thompson has his hand raised. You are now recognized. Thank you, Chair Mariniger. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting some of the comments tonight. Uh, you know, we need to be concerned about what future uses we would have for that site. Um, and, it, you know, I mean, I guess that's where we begin needing to prioritize the what what that site could be utilized for. And, and I'm not sure what would be a higher priority for us to consider than affordable housing for our seniors, the young families that we're trying to get to move into town, uh, and our town employees. Um, I, I think there's been a lot of work done on this and, and thanks to Cynthia Dell for continuing to push this ball down the road uh, with significant opposition, obviously. Uh, clearly the methane study is is gotta be what we, we look to, uh, uh, I mean, that's gonna be determining whether or not we move forward or, or whether or not we can't consider it any further. Um, but in the exhaustive work that both I did with Councillor Anderson on this uh, more than a year long uh, ad hoc committee on housing, uh, you know, and, and to, to, to comment on some of the other comments about uh, the, the other sites would be, uh, this site would be particularly more difficult to develop than other sites. Well, what other sites are there? I mean, uh, with all due respect, uh, what other sites are there that could potentially provide us with an opportunity to build between 100 and 200 homes if we did it correctly? Uh, and if we can move this ball down the road and we can, uh, maybe, maybe there could be some, if we make it a possible, a possibility, there might be some grants that could be available down the road. Uh, right now, I know uh, there, there aren't, we looked for some, but who knows what could happen every day you read the newspaper and affordable housing, affordable housing, affordable housing, it's on everybody else's top priority. Um, it's been something since uh, Cynthia Dell has worked very hard to get a, as a top priority. Um, and I think the time has come for us to find out whether or not Goldcrest is something that the town citizenry would support. Now we got some work to do between obviously now and the referendum being voted on, but I think this is a logical uh, next step to at least move it to a workshop. Thank you. Can I say something else? Yes, you Councilor know, Jordan. Sure. Yes. You know, you know the the uh, the the arguments being used. It it isn't logical to me. If we truly believe that we want to move a project forward at that site, why do we need the referendum? Why wouldn't we put our energy in as a council into looking at the priorities and then putting a project together? that makes sense and and is is structured in a way that can move it forward. Why are we wasting, why are we taking time to do this non-binding referendum? Why don't we take our energy and put it towards getting the project going? Oh, Councillor Harris. Chairman Reiniger. Okay, I will. Oh, go ahead. Yes, uh, Councilor Thompson, if you want to respond no, ahead, to Councilor Jordan, go ahead, please, yes. No, I, you know, if, if the council's ready to vote on, on something, I mean, I think the, the idea behind the referendum was to get gauge the town's sentiment. I mean, if, if the town council, uh, the last move on the town council was to kind of halt it based on, I mean, we had the study and then the, town, the last town council basically halted any movement forward until the it could be te the site could be deemed to be healthy enough to build on. So, I think, if I this think council, if Penny, can I, Council Jordan, yeah. could I finish? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as I understand it, that was the last vote that took place. This ball was moving down the road, and when that study came in and we got pushback, or you got pushback, it kind of got stalled. So if this if this council uh, is deeming affordable housing important enough, 
that they're ready to move forward with some uh, uh, actual movement on it, I'd be happy to support that. I think where I'm at, Ken, is that why don't we look at the work of the Housing Diversity Study Committee, prioritize the work, and put projects forward? And if the, the uh, I think it was the minority report gets brought in, why don't we as a council prioritize the work we want we want to put forward in town? That's what's beyond me. I I don't understand the the referendum. Uh, if we truly believe in affordable housing, the Housing Diversity Study Committee finished their work. The uh, the uh, putting on hold, as you say, until we had some tests done, I think was a was a responsible thing to do. Now let's get the re the results of those tests and let's look at what we want to do at that site, if anything, as as a council. At, uh, uh, it's just beyond me why we we would spend our time with a referendum when we could spend our time prioritizing the work we want to have, uh, we want to put forward for the citizens. All right, thank you, Councillor Jordan, Councillor Harriman. I, I a comment to a lot of what's going on, to, to Tim's comment about that we put it on hold, we've kind of, not put it on hold, but we're waiting for that, the, the methane gas study, right? We, we really don't want to, put too much more money and, and effort into a project if it's going to be dead in the water before, you know, we get that. We can't do anything until we know if we can move forward. So we're not so much on hold as we're, we're waiting for that report to come back. So I agree with Penny that our next step is probably to go to workshop. Based on just the conversation that we've had here tonight, it is clear that the council needs to sit down and be able to just free flow talk about what we want to be doing because Everybody's got ideas this way and that. To move this to a referendum right now with this non-binding language, it's, as Penny pointed out, it's gonna be bad optics one way or the other. Who's gonna vote no on, on the wording like that when you're not really putting anything out there? Do you, do the, no, no, the original motion, the original ask was for a non-binding referendum question. I understand that the motion currently is to go to a public hearing, right? But, but that public hearing is about still whether or not to have a, a question on the, the ballot. So even if we have a public hearing next month, I still don't agree that this wording and this question should be going on a referendum. It's too vague and it doesn't give the public a true sense of what we're even asking them, right? Ideally, it's great. Everybody wants to support affordable housing, but they don't know the, the details that they're going to need to know in order to make an informed decision. And this wording does not give that, them, give that to them. So I don't even support sending this to a public hearing next month. I really think we should change the motion to sending it to a workshop. The council has a good hour to discuss it and figure out what our next steps are gonna be. Because we're not making any decisions moving forward together on what our next steps are. We don't have a big plan. We're waiting for the methane gas to come back, and then what, right? Let's talk about it. But having random motions thrown out that we're really not thinking through, I don't think is the best way to proceed with doing this. If you wanna have this multi-potential, multi-million dollar project go through, the best thing to do is to give as much information to the public as possible, and this isn't doing it. This is saying, would you be interested in making available? What does it mean to make available 22 acres? It says, I can, I can bring it up if you'd like there, Cynthia, you just hold on. What? Okay. Well. Go to the mic if you're gonna yeah, be yeah, allowed yeah. to talk. If I may, just respond briefly. The idea is to, ga is to gauge citizen support for this item because we want action. And this would provide the council political cover to put out an RFP to see if a developer could respond to it. It's, it's will you, do you support 
contributing this land for the purpose of developing an affordable housing. Cynthia, that is not what this language says. Do you support the town of Cape Elizabeth making available 22 acres of Gullcrest between the transfer station and the Spurwink River for the purposes of creating right. an affordable housing development that will comply with the state and local zoning ordinance? All of what you just said is not written in what you want included in the referendum It's language. a non-binding referendum but to give the council a mandate. Any of the information that you're spewing right now that's to give people more details. It, we're not ready for this. People aren't going to read those few words and get what you're saying right now. So we are Caitlin, I've been be working on this for three years. I you don't think you people understand this? People understand this. I don't think people they are ready. Do. I urge you to act. Thank you very much. All right, folks. Thank you for the lively discussion. Uh, any other councillors, Councillor Thompson, would like to comment? Uh, councillor, well, I see Councillor Anderson. Please. Yeah, I just, um, to Councillor Harriman's point, I mean, we, by taking this to a public hearing, we're not married to the exact verbiage of the proposed referendum. It could be changed based on information that we obtain. So I'm not as concerned. I mean, I agree that it's a little vague right now. What does make available mean? But I think after, I, I would like to be, I'd like to have my views informed by uh, a, a public comment on this. I think, a, I don't think a public hearing would, um, I think it would be a good idea. And we're not married to the language as is. The language can be changed. I think. Uh, Councillor Gillis. I don't mean to speak. I didn't lower my hand. Okay, so. What'd she say? She didn't mean to speak. Oh. oh. Councillor Thompson, would you like to make another comment? Well, again, I, I think that when you look back at some of the things we've moved, some of the items we've moved to workshop for further discussion and public input. Uh, this seems like, you know, a pretty important item to be willing to have an hours long workshop on to give citizens a chance. Uh, as Councillor Anderson said, we can refine this. Uh, 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 Cynthia is not wedded to this, obviously. She said that. It's an effort to move this ball down the road. Um, and I think it's well worth the time that we would spend to refine it and, and get people more comfortable with it. So I, I strongly support uh, moving this to a workshop. Thank you. Right. The, to a quick comment. Uh, isn't the motion a public hearing? Yes. So, yes, so we'll make an we'll amendment vote or vote it down, one or the other. So, so I, can I ask if, if Councillor Thompson meant workshop or public hearing? I'm sorry, I meant I meant public hearing. Sorry. So, in uh, discussions with Mrs. Sturgis, not to put him on the spot, there is there is a you know all the points made are well considered, and the concerns. Uh, there is a very nice uh, timing here and set of steps that I see possibly playing out here. We have. Public hearing in May. The question, regardless of what happens, has to be sent to our town attorney for formal review. We have, we will be receiving the studies of the um, the property and the methane gas study by end of May or so, and then we are scheduled to have a workshop on housing again in June. So the, the vote on the referendum to actually place it on the ballot would then be time to take place in June after all of these steps. So I think, as I'm hearing all the concerns, I think there's an ample opportunity and, uh, to address all of them and there'd be plenty of, of information available with this timing. So that's why I'm comfortable sending it to public hearing at this point. So. Councillor Harriman. Could I say, could I say that oh. Francis Walsh has his hand up and Cynthia got a chance to speak, so should he get a chance to speak as well? I didn't understand what you said. Somebody else had their hand up, Matt, that would like to speak again. Oh, do you want to allow that, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Walsh has his hand up. 
that were encountered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Cynthia got to come to the podium and speak again, well, which is why I said, if you're going to be allowed to speak, then you needed to go to the podium, and you allowed her to speak. So Penny's only pointing out that somebody else wants to speak. Oh. And because he's not Councilor able to Herman run to the podium, he's not being allowed to speak. Well, uh, is it, all right, Mr. Walsh, do you have a, would you like to speak for a minute or so? Unmute him. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like to say, with all due respect, um, there are no other sites that have, have been identified. And that could be that um, maybe the town of Cape Elizabeth is rushing this whole affordable housing thing a little bit too much. I think that, uh, and I don't need to say it, but I'll say it anyway, we all agree that we need affordable housing in all of our communities. But I do, however, think that there has not been enough study done on that one particular site. And with regard to a non-binding referendum such as the one that Cynthia Dill presented, I can tell you any voter in November that reads that or if it's been modified is still not going to know what that means. They, they're they going to think that the town of Cape Elizabeth wants them to say yes, the 22 acres is available for development without knowing anything else about that site. Um, I think that the the town needs to take a little bit more time and prioritize what they'd like to see with affordable housing. I know that you know a lot of time has been spent by the Housing Diver Diversity Study Committee, but I don't think that LD2003 is expecting any town. Cape Elizabeth has done more work on affordable housing than probably any other town has done in Maine. Um, I can't imagine that uh, you're going to be penalized because you haven't developed Gull Crest for affordable housing. Besides the uh, referendum question, the fact that a study has been done on that site already signifies to the town that maybe that site is being considered. So that a referendum, non-binding referendum question is very, very misleading. And I think the uh, the town of Cape Elizabeth, the residents of the town of Cape Elizabeth, the voters don't need uh, misleading referendum questions uh, in November. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. So, Mr. Her uh, Council Harriman. I just have two things, if I can remember them. The first one was that if this is passes and it goes to a public hearing for next month. I ask you, the ones who set the agenda, to be recognizing that we have the pesticide ordinance now set for a public hearing, and then this will be set for a public hearing. So maybe be kind on the rest of the agenda for the night, because I imagine we'll be here a while and people don't want to have to be out, or maybe put the public hearings first so that people don't have to sit for a long agenda. That's the first one. Second one was to Deb. What would the date be that we have to decide on putting something on the ballot by, in order for it to get on the November ballot? If I may, Mr. Chairman, yeah. uh, we'll be asking the council to sign the election warrant in August. It's going to have to be done by the end of August, and of course we're waiting to see what the SBAC committee you know, because we'll need the wording for that as well. Um, but it's early September that the deadline is for the wording to go to the ballot to be able to be printed for absentees and so forth. So I'm just saying, with your timeline that you laid out, we don't necessarily have to have the language and everything figured out for this to go to a non-binding referendum in the June. We could wait the summer, see what other information we can develop, and we can have meetings and figure out what more direction we want to go in so that we have the best formed language to go on this non-binding question, just to keep that in mind. That's a very important point. Thank you. All right. Are the councilors ready to vote? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. The motion is to send this matter to public hearing at the May 13 town council meeting. Councilor Anderson. Yes. Councilor Gabrielson. Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? No. Councillor Jordan? No. 
Councillor Thompson. Yes. Chairman Reiniger. Yes. Motion carries, five yay, two nay. Okay, thank you. Can I just ask a clarifying question now that it passed? What exactly is going to a public hearing? The referendum question. The referendum question as worded as I read out loud. Right. Okay, I'm just curious what, what actually we were that's, sending. That's, that was put forward by Councilor Gillis in her request. So. Right, well, she just said I request a public hearing. Well, if I, you go back and listen to all that she said, it never really says what we're going to be having a public hearing on. So I was just curious as to what. Uh, yes, on the proposed question. Yes, thank you. All right. Item 25 of the agenda, which is actually item 78 2024, the school budget validation referendum warrant. Would any member of the public like to comment on this item in the chamber? Anyone online? No hands raised online, okay. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So the draft motion is uh, ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approves the school budget validation referendum election warrant for Tuesday, June 11, 2024, said election to be held at the Cape Elizabeth High School. Polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Would any member like to make a motion or move this item? So moved. Councillor Gabrielson makes the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Councillor Anderson seconds. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question from the clerk. Yes, just to confirm if the council wants to include the non, speaking of non-binding, the non-binding expression of opinion that is not required by law. It is something that the council put in a number of years ago when we were first um, uh, doing the validation vote just to try to gauge how the, uh, uh, if somebody voted for or against the, the school budget. Um, again, it's not required, but we just want to point out to the council that it's your decision whether that uh, stays on the warrant or if you remove it. Again, your decision. Thank you. Does that need to be, does Council Gabrielson need to amend his motion to include that? No, I just want to make sure that if it goes as is, that's in there, but if someone okay. wants to amend it to take it out. Oh, okay, I thought I saw it in there, so get on that. All right, are the councilors ready to vote? I'll ask the clerk to please call the vote. Councillor Anderson. Yes. Councillor Gabrielson. Yes. Councillor Gillis. Yes. Councillor Harriman. Yes. Councillor Jordan. Yes. Councillor Thompson. Yes. Chairman Reiniger. Yes. Motion carries unanimously, seven yay. Thank you. All right, the next agenda item 26 is uh, we now begin a series of items. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that relate to our tr town manager transition. So the first item 79 2024 consider appointing the town council as the search committee for a new town manager. Would any member of the public like to comment on this matter? In the chamber, any member online? All right. Now, look, ask for a uh, draft motion ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council designates the town council as a whole as the search committee for a new town manager. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Councillor Harriman. Second. 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 Second by Council Penny Jordan. Thank you. Are the council is ready to vote. I'll ask the clerk to please call the vote. Councillor Anderson. Yes. Councillor Gabrielson. Yes. Councillor Gillis. Yes. Councillor Harriman. Yes. Councillor Jordan. Yes. Councillor Thompson. Yes. 
Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries, seven yay. Okay, thank you. Next agenda item is 27. Technically, it's item 80 2024 to consider approving a request for proposals to hire a search consultant for a new town manager. Would anyone in the public like to comment on this item? Anyone in the chamber seeing none? Would anyone online like to comment on this? No hands raised online, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> The draft motion is ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approves an RFP for a consultant to assist with the search for a new town manager. The draft is attached. The, I understand it was prepared by a joint effort of Councillors Anderson and Gabrielson. Thank you for that. Is there a motion to approve that motion? So moved. Moved by Councillor Harriman. Is there a second? Second by Councillor Penny Jordan. Any further discussion? I'll ask the clerk to begin the vote. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? Yes. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion is unanimous. Thank you. All right. Um, item, agenda item 28, item uh, 81 2024, to enter into executive session to discuss the hiring and contract for an acting town manager. And second, a request of a hardship property tax abatement. There is an opportunity for public comment on this item, would anyone in the chamber like to comment? Would anyone online like to comment? No hands raised online, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> we have a draft motion that ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council enters executive session pursuant to 1 MRS section 405-6A, capital A, to discuss the hiring and contract for an acting town manager, and one MRS section 405 six capital F to discuss a request for a hardship property tax abatement. Is there a motion? So moved. By Councilor Gabrielson, is there a second? Second. By Councilor Harriman. Council is ready to vote, all in favor? Oh, sorry, roll call please. <laughs> Actually, the clerk. just for clarification, oh, Yes. Um, I, I'm, just wondering if you could clarify if the council is expecting to take action on oh. any of these items following the executive session. Thank you very much. Yes, we will be coming back and be expecting to take formal action on these two items after the executive session. So I'd ask the camera crew to please stay. That will, the only other item after that will be further opportunity for public comment. So yes, we will be coming back. All right, we'll take the vote, please. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? Councillor Gillis should be live as well. And yes. That was Councillor Gillis. Councillor Gillis said yes. And Councillor Jordan yes. should be live now, too. Oh, I feel alive oh, again. You're back. Thank <laughs> you. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Thompson? Yes, and I think we just need to keep ourselves unmuted. unmuted. <laughs> Chairman Reiniger? Yes. This motion does carry unanimously seven yay. Well, thank you. All right. So now we will proceed to the Jordan Conference. So Matt, we've got to get out of this one and dial into the other one, right? That other invite you send us, we got to leave this and go into the other one? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So then we'll have to come back into this one as well. All right. Thanks. <clears throat>
think everybody's coming online. Penny's just joining, and uh, Tim is on, and Susan should be here too. Yep, there she is. Three councillors are in oh. on Zoom now, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, so we're good to go. All right. Thank you. We are now back in our open public session. We, the executive session, took up two matters, which will now be acted upon consecutively. The first one involves the appointment and contract for an acting town manager item 82-2024. Now there is an opportunity for public comment with anyone from the public, either in the chamber or online, like to comment. No hands raised online, Mr. All right, Chairman. Thank you. All right, but so next we need a take action on uh, approving the contract and appointment of an acting town manager. Isn't it, Mr. Chair, isn't it interim town manager as opposed to acting? If, if I may be of assistance, yes. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. The, the, yeah, the contract has the language that's used interim uh, there, so you'd be safe. We're using that. I, I think it's yeah. different. But okay. So interim is good. All right. All right. So we need a motion for to approve the contract, the appointment of contract for an interim town manager. Councilor Harriman would like to make I'm a so motion. I'm so happy to. Well, I'm not happy that Matt's leaving, but I'm so happy to make this. After going into executive session and we reviewed the contract for the interim town manager, I am most happy to put forth that we will be entering into a contract with Mike McGovern to come back and be our interim town manager while we search for Matt's replacement. So I I'll motion second. that we approve the town council enter into this contract. I'll All right. second that. Okay. I'll second that. All right, so Mitch. approval of the appointment and contract regarding um, Mr. Michael McGovern to be made by Councillor Harriman, seconded by Councillor Penny Jordan. Is there any further discussion by the council? Anyone would like to comment? It is my understanding that Councillors Harriman and Jordan had the pleasure of actually serving with Mr. McGovern in the past when he was here as town manager, so thank you for moving that and supporting that appointment. All right, are the councillors ready to vote? All right, uh, I'll ask the clerk to call the vote, please. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Enthusiastically, yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? A huge yes, and thank you, Mike McGovern, for joining us. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries unanimously with seven yay. Thank you. All right. So I uh, think I'll join all of the council members in thanking Michael McGovern for his willingness to come back and serve the town. That's great. All right. Next item, item uh, 30 in the agenda, number 83-2024, to consider a request for a hardship property tax abatement. As always, an opportunity for public comment on this. Would anyone like to comment in the chamber or online? No hands raised online, Mr. Chairman. 
I would ask for a motion on the matter from the council. Council Anderson? I move that we deny the request. Okay. Second. Okay. Seconded. Made by Council Anderson, seconded by Councilor Gabrielson. Any further discussion? Our council is ready to vote. I'll ask the clerk for, for the vote, please. Councilor Anderson? Yes. Councilor Gabrielson? Yes. Councilor Gillis? Yes. Councilor Harriman? Yes. Councilor Jordan? Yes. Councilor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the final item is uh, the citizens may at this point in the meeting raise any topic that is not on the agenda that pertains to Cape Elizabeth local government. Would anyone in the chamber like to speak on this? Anyone online like to speak? One hand raised, Mr. Chairman, online with Tim D. Okay. So. And your microphone should be live, Tim. All right, I'm good? Yes, sir. All yes. right, so um, I just have a few things uh, that I that I have written down here. Um, I know it got with, withdrawn, but I just want to make the comment that, that the town should not be in the business of giving taxpayer money to any sort of charity. Um, tonight's charity is one that was near and dear to my heart, but I just think, you know, and I know there's precedent. I know we're already doing it, but we, we, we should not be giving away taxpayer money uh, to charity, period. That's not, it's not, it's not charity to give other people's money away. It's just, it's just not. Um, and the only other thing I had was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the housing diversity study report. We keep talking about that as if it's you know, word from God himself or something. Um, it came out during, during, you know, maybe the, one of the last meetings of the community of the committee that that, that, that the study that it was based on, it was severely flawed. There was no waiting for self selection bias. So there's no way to tell, um, what the makeup of the people who took that survey were. Um, what that means is 90% of the people who took that survey could have opposed Dunham Court or 90% could have supported Dunham Court. And the survey failed to ask that question. So there's no way to know who took that survey and adjust for that bias. And again, that comes directly from the person who, who uh, you know, was, was the representative from the firm that did that study. So before we, you know, pretend that, that they did all this work and it's gospel, you know, that, that needs to be discussed. Um, and actually, I did have one more thing. The School Building Advisory Committee has been working for a year now, and they have yet to set a budget. They're down to, I believe, three plans, three options, two of which are over $100 million. And if, if uh, you know, I understand the idea of giving that committee a long leash, but they've had over a year at this point. And I don't think anyone on the on the council thinks that another going to the town and asking for another hundred million dollars, a uh, hundred million dollar project, asking them to support that. I don't think anyone on the council thinks that will pass. And and if if this committee wants to get get that on the refer on or out to referendum on or by November, then maybe the town council needs to step in and 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 set a number for them because it's just it's just bizarre honestly that they've worked on it for over a year and they have yet and and like i said two out of the three plans are over 100 million dollars um another thing that needs to be investigated by the way that has been brought up but kind of brushed over a little bit the 116 the 116 million dollar proposal from from two years ago that was shot down the 116 million dollar proposal Harriman and and our owners rep have both both acknowledged that that one sixteen million dollar number was a fantasy. It was way under what it would have been to replace two new schools. So my question is, what would have, what would have happened if 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 the town would have voted in favor of the one hundred sixteen million dollars? What would have happened when all of a sudden it's like, oops, it's one hundred eighty million dollars? 
what then? And what is what what are we doing this time around to make sure that that doesn't happen again? That's all I got. Thank you. Uh, would the gentleman please give his name and address for the record, please? Tim Dew, 56 Stonegate. Thank you. Would anyone else from the public like to speak we have online or in the chamber? Mr. Chairman, Polly Wilcox has oh. her hand up. Chair recognizes Polly Wilcox for three minutes. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry to um, double dip here tonight. <laughs> 17 Cape Woods Drive, Polly Wilcox. Um, the sound is so much better at home, but I've been trying for half hour to get on. So um, just, just a thought, if we want people who might be less inclined to come to a meeting to come, we probably want to work on some of the remote microphones. That's all. Thank you so much for what you do. You all work really hard, and I know your lives are not a piece of cake either. So thank you so much for what you do. The end. Thank you, Ms. Wilcox. Are there any other members of the public who would like to speak? No further hands, Mr. Chairman. All right. We're now at the end of the meeting and entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved, moved by Councillor Harriman, second by Councillor Gabrielson. I will ask for a, to call the vote, please. Councillor Anderson? Yes. Councillor Gabrielson? Yes. Councillor Gillis? Yes. Councillor Harriman? Yes. Councillor Jordan? Yes. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Chairman Reiniger? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.